Okay, so we talked about temperature, now it's time to talk about pressure. So pressure is a normal force exerted by a fluid per unit area, which is all fun and good, but what is it? Well, let's talk about it from people. So for example, I've got two guys here. And if I'm talking about the pressure, or normal stress technically, but pressure that the people are feeling on their feet, well, this heavier person and this lighter person might be feeling the exact same amount, or they might be feeling different amounts. So what's going to determine it? Well, it's that ratio. Pressure is equal to force over area. So in this case, the heavier person, because they both have the same size feet, the force is greater, that means the pressure they're feeling is greater. Now, why do we care about this? Well, because let's say I bring in, you know, I don't know, an elephant who weighs 5,000 pounds and has a feet of roughly 1,100 inches squared for the area of their feet. As a note, I did actually look this up, and this is roughly accurate. There is a range. Some elephants have bigger feet than others. So if I were to do the pressure here and figure out the pressure on the elephant's feet were, I would do 5,000 divided by 1,100 inches squared. And I would get that it's 4.5 PSI. So this elephant right here is actually feeling less pressure than this man right here because it's all based on the size of the feet. The example I love to give is which do you think is going to hurt more? Someone wearing, you know, a high heel shoe. Let's see if I can draw this. Okay, there we go. Should I go into fashion design, everybody? I think not. Okay, a high heel shoe or a crazy clown shoe. Which one's going to hurt more if they step on your foot? That stiletto heel is going to hurt a whole lot more. Why? Because it's a very, very small area. Even if it's a smaller force, it's going to be a lot more pressure. And pressure is what you feel. Pressure is all we feel. We don't feel forces, we feel pressure. Because everything you experience, every force you experience, is always distributed over a, an area. Pressure is why knives are scary, because if I have a knife, the weight of that knife might not be all that much. Is that how you draw a knife? Let's see, there you go. Ding! Weight of that knife might not be all that much. However, the area right there is very, very, very small, okay? And because it's such a small area, the pressure is going to be very, very big. So I don't want that, okay? That's why they always say a falling knife has no handle, because even though the handle won't hurt you because the force isn't that great, if you accidentally grab the blade, you're not going to have a happy time. So pressure, force over area. Now, there are various ways we can measure pressure. First off, there's absolute pressure. That's simply going from absolute zero no pressure whatsoever, that's from a vacuum to whatever it is. And that's what we typically measure. However, there's two other cases too. There's gauge pressure. If you're using um, a pressure gauge to measure the pressure in your tire, so you're measuring your tire here. Okay, let's see, make it looking good here. Okay, you do that, you measure the pressure gauge, you find that little point right there, you put the pressure gauge on it. It might say 32 PSI. That's what the pressure is in my tires. However, that's PSI gauge. Why? Because that is 32 PSI more than atmospheric. Your tires, if they were the same pressure as atmospheric pressure, they would be zero gauge pressure and they'd be completely flat. They have to be greater than atmospheric to inflate. So you don't want a flat tire here to get, um, to get in, uh, inflated. I have to increase it above atmospheric. And you can see that right here. This is atmospheric pressure, and this is my gauge pressure. It is the difference between atmospheric and whatever my absolute pressure is right then. There's also a thing called vacuum pressure. I don't see this used all that often, and just so you know, I actually have worked with high vacuum systems. Um, typically, we still just go on absolute pressure. But vacuum pressure is simply saying how much lower than atmospheric am I? How much have I sucked it out to go below atmospheric pressure? Because the lower I go, the harder it is. As a note, if the air around me was a vacuum, it would not be hard to reduce the pressure in any particular device to vacuum. It's always a pressure difference that's really hard. 
But for us, we're almost always dealing with absolute pressure unless I specifically say gauge pressure. And so far as I know, I will never, ever, ever use vacuum pressure. I just showed that to you because I want to give you that example. And here's some equations here. Gauge, remember, is simply saying I'm, how much am I above atmospheric? Vacuum, how much am I below atmospheric? That's what we're getting at there. And here's a nice little blown up picture of all those. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll do an example next time. Bye-bye.